Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Sam. Today I'm back with 25 more hidden features and changes inside of iOS 13. The size of this update continues to blow my mind and there's some really cool stuff we're going to be checking out today. So if you're excited for that, drop a like down below. Always helps me out. I appreciate that tremendously and hit subscribe so you stay up to date on the latest Apple news. Let's go ahead and get started with number one. All right, so kicking things off here with HomePod and iOS 13, you can tap your phone or iPad on it to actually take your music with you. So all the time I'll be playing music on my HomePod and then I have to go get in my car, but the music is sourced from the HomePod, not my actual cell phone. So I have to just, you know, queue up the song, search for it on my phone. Now I can literally just walk up to it, tap my phone near my HomePod, and that song will transfer immediately to my phone so you could take it in the car with your AirPods as you're walking down the street, which is super cool. I love that convenience. Inside of the Photos app, there is Perspective Transform as an editing option now. I think Instagram has had this since the dawn of the app. I don't know why it took Apple so long to put this feature inside of the Photos app for everybody that doesn't use Instagram, but as you can see, you can sort of warp and bend the frame in a way that you can never do natively in the stock Photos app before. Also, when sharing photos in iOS 13, you do have an awesome option to remove location data. So let's say you wanted to send somebody a photo, but there was a geotag of maybe somewhere you weren't supposed to be or somewhere you just didn't want them to know, you know, the precise location or area of where you were. You can still send a photo of something, but that geotag data will not be attached to the photo any longer for enhanced privacy uh, and personal security. Inside of settings in the Safari preference panel, you have the option of where you want your downloads to go. So the Safari download manager is one of the most handy features in iOS 13. Now you can choose to save it by default in iCloud Drive, on your phone, on Dropbox, Google Drive, or anywhere else. You can choose the exact location where Safari downloads will be stored. And also you can remove download list items after one day upon successful download or even manually. And just like you can change where Safari downloads go, you can also now customize where screenshots go. So before you could only either delete the screenshot or save it to the Photos app. Now with the greater customization inside of iOS 13, if you want a screenshot shot to not be in your personal photo library, which would always get annoying, you can save them to a special area inside of the Files app. So no more screenshots clogging up your personal library. And also in the Files app, let's say you download a zip file from Safari, you no longer have to go to your Mac to actually unzip or open that zip file properly. Uh, iOS 13 can uncompress things, which again saves you a step uh, and makes it much easier to use your iPad as that day-to-day -day computer. Heading over to Voice Memos, you can now pinch to zoom on the waveform to edit easier before you had to just manually drag around and it took a really long time it was not super fun or easy in any way to edit your voice memos and also if you head over to the photos app you could do this for a while where you could sort of like pinch to zoom out and see a broader collection of your photos or pinch to zoom in see a narrow more recent collection of your photos now when you do that the photos app because of its new algorithms and on-device suggestions will show you things in a much cleaner way rather than just zooming out and seeing all of your photos spread out to infinity, they're going to automatically group together by months or events or trips automatically, which actually makes the sorting so much easier and just fun. Like I found myself just in the photos app, scrolling around and zooming out to see, you know, some memories that I may have forgotten. One thing that Apple has made clear year after year is that they care about your privacy. And in iOS 13, they take that one step further with something called sign in with Apple. This is going to be mandatory if sign in with Facebook or Google or Twitter or anything else is present in an app for Apple's developer guidelines. So you're not going to have a safe, secure, and private way to sign into an app without giving all of your personal data to Facebook because, well, we know what happened when Facebook was in charge of that. So if you want a safer way to sign in without having to make a new account for everything and manually sign in, sign in with Apple is going to be the option for you, and I think it's going to be really cool. While you're on public transit, do not disturb while driving will no longer activate. That's the feature that while when you're driving, you can set that on your phone. It will automatically detect when you're moving uh, and won't show you any notifications to distract you from the road. Obviously, if you were on public transit, you weren't driving, so that wasn't necessary, and iOS 13 now detects that like it should. If you have one of the 2018 iPhones or newer, they support better sound quality Dolby Atmos playback. So if you watch any movies or TV shows that are encoded that way, that have that really good high quality sound, your iPhone can now play it back. Got better through a software update. If you have an iPhone with Face ID and accessibility settings in iOS 13, you have the option to add a haptic feedback 
back for whenever a successful face scan has been completed. So for example, every time you unlock your phone, you can get a little vibration so that let's say if you just picked your phone up, looked at it for a second and then looked away, you could actually get notified when you were authenticated or the same thing is true any other time you'd be using Face ID, for example, to make an Apple Pay purchase. Uh, I find it interesting that this is an accessibility setting, but it's sort of hidden in here if it sounds interesting to you. With shortcuts in iOS 13, there are all kinds of new automation features, but there's also the opening up of NFC generally in iOS 13. So with NFC tags, you can actually like buy these now and actually set up specific workflows on your iPhone so that when you tap or move your iPhone near somewhere, uh, a dialog will pop up and you can engage with that NFC tag straight from your phone. This is something we've again been waiting on for years, the iPhone to become more open. And now there's a whole nother level of customization through NFC that just wasn't here before. Keeping track of your subscriptions can be really hard and Apple knows that. So in iOS 13, there's like an idiot proof feature to where if you have a subscription for a particular or through a particular app, it is going to tell you if you try to delete it, hey, just to let you know, you do have a subscription active. So you probably want to cancel that before you actually remove the app from your device. Now, obviously there's some cases where, you know, you just want to get rid of the app maybe temporarily, but in general, I think this is going to be really handy and we'll be like, oh, now I don't have to guess what this recurring $15 a month charge on my credit card bill is. Inside of settings, whenever there is an update available, you now have the option to tap and hold on download and install or whatever these options are here and either download only or schedule the update for when you want it to install. Before, this would only appear if you sort of kept delaying the update or didn't really notice it, but now you can tap and hold and basically get these options on demand. This is new since iOS 13 was first in beta and it's out of this world. So if you have an iPhone 10s, a 10R, or a 10s Max, you have something called a FaceTime attention correction. As you know, when you're on a FaceTime call, you look at your screen and it doesn't actually look like you're making eye contact with the person that you are communicating with. Now your phone will actually, using augmented reality, adjust your eyes to make it appear as if you're, you're looking into the camera. Obviously, I sound skeptical here because you'd think it didn't work, but I have FaceTime with people, told them, hey, I'm staring at my screen right now. How does this look? And they have told me, yes, it looks like you're making direct eye contact with me right now. And it's kind of uncomfortable. Definitely made by some wizard. And I don't know how Apple did it, but it's pretty sweet. And it's definitely going to make FaceTime a little bit more personal. In the health app, Apple added some new audio features or audio monitoring features in iOS 13. And just one of those is headphone audio level. It shows you the volume or the range in which you've listened to music on your headphones and will let you know, hey, you're either listening to this at an appropriate volume or that, uh, you know, a volume that could actually damage your hearing loss, which nobody wants to hear. But it's at least handy to know that if you have dangerously high or loud audio, it could mess with your hearing in the future and you should probably be aware of that. In general, in iOS 13, there is expanded voice control pretty much everywhere that there is a keyboard. You now have this little voice control icon at the very bottom of your screen. It also appears in a lot of places just in search bars, not everywhere just yet, but much more frequently than it was before. So if you're somebody that loves talking with your phone at my dad, he'll just like whisper into his phone all the time, really uncomfortably, but he loves it. Uh, then you can do that easier than ever before because the support is just pretty much everywhere. The actual maps inside of the new maps app are going to get a major upgrade with iOS 13. They're only out in select areas right now, but they're rolling out throughout the U S uh, throughout the rest of 2019, expanding worldwide a little bit later on, probably end of 2019 into 2020. So roads, beaches, parks, and buildings. They have more detail. They look more accurate. And of course, I showed you guys this one before, but the new Street View feature is absolutely amazing. So definitely check that out if you want to see, you know, Apple's version of Street View. And while giving you directions, this is one of those features that you're not going to really notice until it would be gone. But Siri gives you more natural directions. So instead of telling you what I never got, like turn right in a thousand feet as if any human can remotely or accurately gauge what a thousand feet actually looks like in front front of them, Siri's so going to say like, hey, turn left at the next traffic light. Augmented reality in iOS 13 finally recognizes people. Now, when I first saw this, I thought it was a joke because we're on like AR3 at this point, I believe. And it seemed a little bit rudimentary that it still hadn't supported, you know, people properly yet. But uh, I guess it, it actually didn't. So it does. And here's a really cool demo of what you can do. Um, literally like black mirrorish blur everybody out, which is kind of 
I don't know, guys. We're getting a little close to the point where I'm like, I don't know if AR is a good thing. I was kind of skeptical of its power, but now you can literally just blur out everybody in the world, just like Black Mirror, and I'm I'm not a fan. It's a little creepy, kind of cool, mainly creepy, and iOS 13 is the reason behind that. If you subscribe to Apple News Plus, you're actually going to see additional content inside of the Stocks app now. Before, that was just located inside of News Plus in that section, but now if you subscribe to News Plus, there's going to be more cross-play between the two apps. And in general, in Stocks, you're going to see news from more publications than ever before. Apple has this technology called Business Chat that they've been using for a couple of years now, basically where you can use iMessage or your message app to communicate with businesses like Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, of course, Apple supports it themselves. Now, when you try to call a business that supports Business Chat, iOS 13 is going to suggest that you text in messages rather than call them because there's likely going to be a wait. In Safari, just like you've been able to do in the mail app for as long as I can remember, you can now adjust the size of the photo that you want to upload. So if I go do this and then and tap down here, you have actual size, small, medium, or large. So if you don't want to upload a full res version of the photo, you now have that customization in Safari, again, making it the most powerful version of mobile Safari that we've ever had on our iPhones or iPads. And saving what arguably could be the best feature on this list for last is being able to find offline devices in Find My. Now, you know if you have Find My iPhone in the past, you could always locate your phone if it was connected to Wi-Fi or cellular, but if it wasn't, if you didn't have a connection somewhere, you could never actually find it. It would you know, just be MIA until you physically picked it up or somebody found it and connected it to the internet. Now you can use crowdsourced anonymous end-to-end -end encrypted Bluetooth in the Apple device network to find it. So that means when you lose your phone, every other Apple device in the world is going to be looking to Bluetooth connect to your phone anonymously to find its precise location, send you that location, and let you know exactly where this device is. This is what the Tile app has been doing forever, and now Apple's brought that to all Apple devices. It's incredible, it's seriously cool, and it is absolutely gonna come in handy if you ever lose your iPhone in a place where you don't have good Wi-Fi or cellular reception. So bravo to Apple for adding that. In addition to all these other features, seriously excited for all of you to get your hands on it. Let me know your thoughts down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed, hit subscribe for more. I've been Sam, and I'll catch all of you in my next video.